Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning all about the materials that you need in the Ashlands that aren't from the Ashlands. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you a list of all of these things ordered from highest priority to least priority. A quick warning, I will be showing you some materials from the Ashlands and what you need to make them, so if you don't want to see that stuff, don't watch this video. Basic stone, the stuff you get in the very beginning of the game. Make sure that you bring some stone, maybe like 200 or so, just so that you have enough to build the various things that require a little bit of stone that you're used to building. You see, in the Ashlands, there's pretty much no stone, so good luck. That being said, things like wood are a little scarce in the Ashlands, but it is totally possible to get wood. There are trees that drop half ash wood and half regular wood. But you may not be able to do this when you first come here, because you might not find an area that has a lot of the trees. So, you might also want to bring some wood as well. Now let's get on to the foodstuffs, because the main thing you're really gonna need that you use over and over again is food items that aren't from the Ashlands. Onions themselves are actually used in one of the higher level Ashlands recipes. You'll need the onions along with Jotun Puffs and Fiddlehead, which is an Ashlands item, in order to make Scorching Medley, which is a really good stamina food that you get three of per craft. Unlike onions, which you can grow in the Ashlands, you'll also be needing Jotun Puffs and Mage Cap, which can only be grown in the Mistlands. These two ingredients are pretty common in the magic food and also for the meads that you can make in the Ashlands update. The meads include Lingering Eater, which increases your magic regeneration rate and requires Mage Cap and Sap, and then there's the Lingering Health Mead, which uses Sap as well. Sap is something harvested from the Mistlands and is very important in the Ashlands. You're going to be using a lot of sap for food, so this is something you should stockpile. And then we have Refined Eater. Refined Eater is made from sap combined with soft tissue, which is technically available in the Ashlands, but in such small quantities that you're really not going to be able to use it. So you're better off making the refined eater in the Mistlands and then bringing it into the Ashlands. You're going to need the refined eater to make the Embla set, which is the mage armor for the Ashlands. Interestingly, you will not need any refined eater to make any of the fancy Ashland staffs. None of them require refined eater. Its main use is to create the magic set from the Ashlands. After that, you don't really need the Refined Eater that much, although you might still want it to make the Ballistae traps and that sort of thing, in smaller quantities. While you won't need Refined Eater that much, you will consistently need Sap, Mage Cap, and Jotun Puffs to make the highest level food. So you really want to have a lot of Sap and Mage Cap and Jotun Puffs. Speaking of food, you'll also be needing plenty of honey. Now, this is probably not a problem, because at this point in the game, I'm sure you have loads of it. But it is important to know that you can't actually make honey in the Ashlands. The beehives won't produce anything there. As far as I know, maybe this will be patched or something so that it works under a shield. But for now, you need to be in the meadows, the black forest, or the plains if you want to produce any honey. Interestingly, honey isn't necessary for any of the mead that the Ashlands offers, but major healing potions are still quite useful. So you might want to stockpile on major healing mead because you're gonna be needing honey, blood clots, and royal jelly, which are all things that you can't get in the Ashlands. You might also consider stockpiling the medium stamina meads because these are also very useful they quickly replenish your stamina, and they're entirely made out of stuff that is not available in the Ashlands. Honey, cloudberries, and yellow mushrooms. While you don't need any honey for any of the new meads in the Ashlands, you do need honey for this one recipe. A good stamina food, called spicy marmalade, requires three vineberry clusters, one honey, and one fiddlehead. 
and there's loads of vine berries and loads of fiddleheads. They're kind of like cloud berries. Once you find them, you get lots of them. But before you find them, you have like none. Finally, you'll also want to get a bunch of barley. Barley is really lightweight and can be held in stacks of 100. So it's easier to bring this over and then make it into flour later because once you make it into barley flour, it actually takes up more inventory space and is harder to move around. So it's usually easier to bring a bunch of barley instead. In addition to the barley for the barley flour, which you'll need if you want to make some of the best food items in the game, you'll also be needing linen thread to make that magic set. Linen thread is a little bit different because it's super heavy. You might want to bring a bunch of flax and then also a spinning machine so that you can make the linen thread there because the linen thread becomes like a metal. It's pretty heavy compared to the flax, which weighs almost nothing. And that's it. These are all the main materials that aren't available in Ashlands, but are really useful there. Oh, wait, there's one more thing. If you're into archery, you should probably also bring a bunch of freeze glands and obsidian, or alternatively, already crafted frost arrows. Frost arrows are really useful in the Ashlands in the beginning because you won't have all the powerful magic and that sort of thing, and they're great on one-on-one -on -one enemies. Speaking of that, don't underestimate the Staff of Embers. Ashlands is full of monsters. You're often going to be fighting three or four things at once. It's AoE. It's going to be faster for you to use the Staff of Embers. It's a really powerful weapon, even in the Ashlands. Don't be tricked into thinking that the Staff of Embers is useless there. It's not. And here it is. This is the list of all the things that I recommend that you bring to the Ashlands, because you can't get them there. Is there anything that you think that I've forgotten? Well, comment below and let me know. Or maybe there's something that you think is so useful in the Ashlands that you should take it there anyway, even if it isn't technically the best. I agree, there's probably something like that that I've overlooked. Additionally, if you want to support my work, consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server to play on with your friends. It's a fantastic way to experience Valheim, and it really ups the immersion. You can use my link, jpvalheim, at Zap Hosting. I also have loads of videos all about managing servers, dealing with problems, and anything that you might want to do with the server. I have some upcoming videos on EWP, which is a mod that allows you to keep a server vanilla and do all sorts of crazy stuff that you don't even think is possible. Very excited about that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.